This is a little uh, object I'm going to make in FreeCAD. Uh, what you're seeing at the moment is the Blender rendering of it. I'll get into how I made that in the part two. What I'm going to do is uh, just give you a very simple introduction to FreeCAD. Um, I've been using Blender quite a bit and I had to learn FreeCAD. And uh, what I've found is that it's much more suited to real world type objects. And then what we can do is take the uh, finished object into Blender to, to render it. So there's, there's, there's no reason why you couldn't use it like that. Just sort of use this editor to uh, create objects that you then go on to use in Blender. Uh, create new. Uh, let's create a blank document and then the first thing you do is you create a body and a body is like the object that uh, the geometrical shapes that you're going to create uh, connected to so uh, create sketch uh, a sketch is like a sort of 2d technical drawing that you're going to um, specify all your dimensions on so create sketch and then uh, we have to specify what plane uh, the sketch exists into. So we'll select XY plane. So in other words, it's like a piece of paper that we're looking down on. Uh, so uh, we're designing the object from above. So uh, here we go. But uh, anyway, edit controls and then we'll put the grid on and you can probably get an idea of uh, what we're going to be doing. Now I'll show you this with FreeCAD. For some reason, all these toolbars are off the side of the screen and it's highly annoying so whatever I end up with is probably going to be slightly different from what you see if you have a go with FreeCAD so let's just arrange these it's worth it even if it means having all these different toolbars on screen at once okay so we're just going to make a, a little box like an experimenter's box so uh, let's see create a rectangle so we'll just put a rectangle down and uh, I'm not too bothered about the dimensions at the moment so we've got a rectangle using the rectangle tool and uh, the problem with it at the moment is it's not constrained at all and, and a CAD package like this is all about constraining geometrical shapes so you can see all of this uh, is ambiguous at the moment it's uh, so we need to lock that down. So what I'll do is I'll select that line there and I'll add a constraint here. Let's see what it's at at the moment. As I'm just making it up as I go along, um, I'll just take more or less what's down there. So that's at 55 millimeters. Let's just change it to 60. So now that's locked and you can't change that uh, aspect of the shape. That's on 60 millimeters. So let's... Uh, that can still move freely, so let's change the height of it. So I'll uh, use that tool, vertical distance. 42 millimeters. So change it to 45. There we go. So now we've still got it saying there two degrees of freedom. So uh, what we're going to do is the simplest way of doing this is I'm going to multiple select with FreeCAD by default you don't actually multiple select uh, with a modifier like control or anything you just click on it so one two three that third point is the center point of the diagram and I will just say if I can remember how to do it I will just say I want those to be symmetrical so there we go that's now fully constrained so as you can see, there's a little arrow there, an arrow on those corners to say that they are equidistant with that center point. Okay, so we'll close that now because we've constrained it. And there we go, there it is in the 3D world. I'm gonna select Blender tools here. There we go. So obviously that's got no um, depth to it at all. We can't pad to add some depth to it 10 millimeters let's say 25 millimeters now this is important point to make about a um, 
parametric model are like this. At any point, we can go back and change any of these uh, dimensions. So, for example, we go back into the sketch now where it's uh, 60, we could just change that to 65. But it doesn't matter how complex the object becomes, we can always go back and change things. So, let's see. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a bit more complicated for myself because I'm going to go to these uh, corners. I'm going to use the fillet tool on the corners. So here we go, fillet tool. So one, two, that's filleted that corner. One, two, that one, that one. You can see they're all uneven. Whoops, that one and that one. And they're all uneven. So what we'll do is take the uh, arc constraint tool and then just go one and then whatever that is probably be about right so let's just change that to six millimeters uh, if you know how you can say I want one thing to be the same as the other one but just for speed and simplicity we'll just click on it there click on it there click on it there there we go and uh, we've still got four degrees of freedom and the reason for that is because those corners that I was using to lock it uh, now don't exist. So uh, let's see. Um, so we'll say the distance between there and there. I forget what I said, but is it 65 millimeters? There we go. Um, again, this makes sense in, in, in CAD terms. If we take that point there and that point there, and then specify that 65 millimeters. Um, that means that this edge is 65 millimeters. Uh, if you take into account these little filleted edges. So we will do the same. We'll say the distance between there and there is, uh, I can't remember what I said. Was it 45 mil? I don't know, maybe. Oh, I've, if you ever do this, if you ever go, like that and muck it up just use this little navigation thing in the corner to say you know that and put it back to top okay so um, two degrees of freedom because you can still move it around and we'll just do the same thing again we'll say there these are the uh, centers of these arcs the arcs basically what they are is they're part of a circle so um, it's saying if there was a circle of um, that uh, radius that would be the sort of cut out part of the circle so let's go one two three say so that's in the middle there we go so then if we go back into there that will all be updated and now we've got this shape and what I would like to do is I would like to cut out the center of it to make it into a little box, like an experimenter's box. So um, here we go. Uh, here we go. So we select one face and we say we're going to attach another sketch to that face. And there we go. And you can see that we can see the geometry of the other shape uh, showing through, but we can't click on it or anything like that. So what we do, and as I say, these toolbars move around, so I've got to find it again external geometry so we just use the external geometry tool and I say I want that uh, that that and that from um, the other sketch I just want those to show through so I can select them I can't manipulate them in any way but I can anchor things onto them so that if I create another rectangle there we go then uh, let's see, do the same thing to it. Let's fill it. it. Let's fill it the uh, edges. Here we go. There we go, it's all filleted. And then do the same thing with these corners, say five mil. Now, was it five millimeters or six millimeters? Let me just check. I want that to be exactly the same. We just see six millimeters, six millimeters. So we'll go back in, 
say now you see these things I'll, I'll give you a little tip here sometimes these labels appear in an awkward position but you just drag them around and they're not just labels they are the constraints themselves so you can just double click on them and then go back in and as I keep saying you can do this at absolutely any point in the process six 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 there we go so we've got the the rough shape but uh, still got four degrees of freedom so again this makes sense in CAD terms if, if we want this area here if we want this to be say two millimeters so the wall of the object will be two millimeters thick jing 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 what we can do is say that and that are two millimeters apart and that is exactly the same thing so there we go so we say they want to be two millimeters apart that's locked that into place that one uh, same thing two millimeters apart that one and that one two millimeters apart some of the labels are a bit confused now so we'll just drag them out so we can see them there we go in fact pop that there and then put that two millimeters apart that and that uh, we already said that's two millimeters apart fully constrained so there's no ambiguity to that uh, we know exactly what that is so we close that sketch so we've got the two sketches there what we've got there is we've got uh, you can see the outline of that other sketch on top of the object so we take this sketch and we say we're not going to pad it we're going to turn it into a pocket we use that sketch as a pocket so that's five millimeters what did we say was it 35 millimeters in height let's just check the uh, the pad is 25 millimeters so if we want a two millimeter I'm clicking on the wrong things here so uh, let's see if we want two millimeters and it's uh, and it's 25 millimeters high we'll make that pocket 23 millimeters and then that gives us yeah we're getting our shape there and uh, something else I'd like to do with this is I would like to put some holes in it you know for cables and things like that so again just select one of those faces and then um, let's make a let's let's make another sketch. We go on sketch, and let's see. So we're in much the same position again. We've got a side-on view. So let's pull through some of the geometry from what we can see there from those other sketches. One, two, three. Four. Uh, actually, uh, and uh, I think because uh, we want to specify from the from the very edge of the uh, object, and let's pop something in like uh, a circle. Same problem as before that that's not really specified exactly where it is, so. Um, let's say that and there's this point right at the bottom let's say that goes there that's at 13 millimeters um, I want it let's see it's at 13 that doesn't look quite right let's say 10 millimeters let's lock down the radius that's about right so that's at 8 millimeters let's say 9 millimeters uh, right okay and then say right from the edge so in other words that point and that point that is the distance from the edge of the sh shape the center of that arc to um, the edge of course with this software it's so extensive you could specify it from all different parts of the circle all sorts you could do but um, okay that's 16 millimeters Let's see what that would look like at 13 
13 millimeters. That seems about right. That's fully constrained now. Let's just put these where we can see them. Uh, there we go. All right, so that's fully constrained. And again, we've got a little the sketch on the surface of that face. So, so you can do, you know how sometimes when you're screwing something in, you've got sort of, it's sort of like a funnel shaped screw hole and, and that sort of thing. It can do all that, but uh, we're not bothering with that. So we'll just make another pocket. Uh, there we go, and that just makes a hole in it. It's five millimeters into a two millimeter thing. That's okay then. Uh, with the uh, the hole rather than the pocket feature, you can tell it to just keep going through until it hits something or, or that sort of thing, if you want. Uh, okay, and we'll make that a little bit more complicated because as I say you can just keep adding things, keep changing things at any stage in the process. So let's make another little shape here we want in the side. Right, uh, we've got to constrain this now. Oh, sorry, it's just, there we go. So the height of it, uh, of course, I would be working normally to some sort of, well, let's make it exactly the same. Let's make it nine millimeters, same as the radius of that hole. And uh, let's see, uh, as I'm going, as I say, I'm just moving these labels around. And uh, let's say well, the width of that is whatever it is at the moment. Oh, let's change it a bit, 18 millimeters. And we'll say we want, let's see, we want this whole thing. Is that locked on? All right. Um, okay, so it's just moving up and down now. It's got one degree of freedom. Uh, so we'll say that to that is whatever we want. Six millimeters. There we go tidy these up a bit just in case I want to look at it again and then if I go like that there we go so we got the uh, we got the holes and that's the that is the basic shape for a little experimenters box 